talk about resilience in the recruitment industry and um, I noticed that you were a psychologist in the sports space and I just thought you know what sport and business are so interconnected and I wanted to get almost like the scientific view on you know resilience because I got I got thinking about it and sort of saying look you know when we're hiring people we look to find people that can demonstrate resilience and you know the sales managers and companies and then recruitment sales managers and recruitment companies like come on you guys need to be more resilient um you know resilience is a really you know, really important thing in in the recruitment industry the sales industry but i think that um, resilience is kind of the top level view and i was always sort of intrigued to, to understand you know what's under the hood of resilience where does it come from but before we get into that but maybe just for the people that are watching this could you just give us a quick intro tell us what you do what you're all about maybe explain a little bit about maybe where resilience has come into your kind of orbit in what you do yeah it's great to be to be on these types of conversations simon i love it because it's all about performance and and that is what i look to i love talking about and it's the area i specialize in so my area of psychology is sport exercise and performance um so i kind of fit i've got three hats that i play so um i'm a lecturer at a university i'm a a, a researcher so i love researching all the topics that we we would be going on to talk about but i'm also a practitioner so with that i work with any performers really that's what i love because the only thing that's different sport i view is almost like the shop window of human performance it's the thing that everyone watches everyone can see the performances are there to be reviewed and it's not just reviewed by the coaches think about when you go watch say a football match or golf tournament people leave and they go to the pubs or on their way home and the conversations are all about that performance here's what i would have done different here's how i would have changed this is what they should have done this is what they could have done that's kind of what we do in all of our performance conversations so the only thing that's different with performers is the context that we find ourselves in and how we utilize our technical tactical physiological abilities in those performance domains and a lot of that's done through the way in which you manage our mindset so there's a not an awful lot we can learn from other performance domains and and that's what i specialize in so i do quite a lot of work with athletes i do quite a lot of work in corporate um education all of the different types of performance domains you can think of that's that's what i love to specialize in um so yeah that that's me in a nutshell resilience is an interesting one um for me resilience does get that bit of a buzzword and i think you've kind of hit the nail on the head of you need to be more resilient do i is it what do you mean what is it you're actually referring to when you say i need to be resilient and i, I think that's the really interesting thing because i don't think people know enough about it but they throw the word around as if it's something that's on me that i should have as an individual and the literature tells us that you could be the most resilient person but if you are in a, an environment that's incredibly challenging and incredibly intensive it doesn't matter because you've only got a certain that resilient skill allows you to perform within your limits but once it goes well beyond that the environment dictates how resilient an individual can be so it's important that we look at the environment that we find ourselves in particularly within an organizational setup are we creating an environment to allow people to be resilient and that's the question we need to ask ourselves leaders need to ask themselves the environment can dictate the performance which is why you will have individuals who are resilient in some contexts but really struggle in others and we often place the blame on the individual. Yes, can we equip them with better skills to, to manage that environment? But the environment's got to allow for it too. Interesting. So the environment is a, a really critical and pivotal part of the resilience conversation. But obviously resilience, to, to some extent, feels like a very individualistic thing in the sense that there's this idea that you build resilience, that you learn resilience, that you'll, you grow resilience as a internal thing mm. and then you sort of think well you know we you and i were talking just before this call about our kids and mm. you know their experiences in life so you know does resilience come from a sporting event or a a, a non-sporting event where they have an experience that helps them learn to be resilient where does that resilience come from is it in your dna when you're born or is it something that happens as you grow and you develop as an individual as a human being yeah great great point a lot of i guess one of the bigger misconceptions around resilience is that it's something you have or you don't i disagree on that um and purely because it is a skill based it's the way in which we manage the stresses that we find ourselves in life unfortunately is is challenging and, and one of the things we, we talked about as parents is 
we sometimes want to take away all the challenge but it's the challenge that allows for the growth and it's through that you develop skills and coping mechanisms on how to be more effective in these challenging environments and that's what resilience is so it's definitely a skill that can be learned and it's definitely a skill that can be developed and enhanced which is why when you think of sport if you think of some of the most successful performers and um unfortunately it's getting this rap recently where okay the most successful individuals have had to go through trauma when you hear their life stories the challenges they've come through so it's almost like where trauma is essential for success no it doesn't have to be it's the skills that they've developed through that trauma that has allowed them to excel in these high pressure environments it's the skills part that that trauma and that those challenging experiences has allowed for them and that is what resilience is about the other aspect where the misconception comes in is that resilience is about excelling in performance and and, and thriving this they, they were a different skill set resilience is about maintaining performance when under great stress and what that stress is doesn't always have to be negative stresses can equally be come from po positive sources so it's about how we manage those stresses and maintain performance so we're able to continue what we're doing so we don't have that massive drop off the cliff that's what resilience is about when we are looking at hiring people into our organizations when we know that resilience is is important when we know that the job that we do is tough uh, because there are highs and lows especially in the recruitment industry when, you know this year there is a narrative that says specifically in the tech space we've been through a tech recession it has been a tough year you know compared with the last couple of years but it's just about sort of understanding how we gauge it, how we view it, how we see it in an interview situation. How do we get to that? You know, is there, is there anything that we can look at that says, you know what, if we hire this person, we can tell that they're a resilient individual or is it almost impossible to tell? Are there any key markers, indicators that we can look at? Do you think I know that's a really tough mm. question? What are your thoughts on that? For me, it is always a two way process in in the sense of whenever you're hiring and looking okay we have to have these markers of what we're looking for but it's equally the environment are, are, do we have an environment in place that is going to allow us to tap into all of these amazing resources that an individual may have and that's the important part because we've seen it and unfortunately in in my position we sometimes have can you come in and deliver a resilience workshop okay great you come in and do it but nothing changes off the back of it because the environment might not allow for it Yes, you might see some change with those individuals who've maybe enhanced some skills off it, but in terms of the wholesale change, so it is a two-way street. What skills are we looking for in the individual, but also from the organization itself? What is the environmental factors that are essential to allow us to tap into that? So, for example, one of the things I, I talk quite a lot about is challenge and support. So do we have a, an environment that challenges people in order to get the best out of them? but not just be pure challenge, because if you stay there too long, it becomes really challenging. It becomes all about giving everything, 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 and not feeling supported. And that's that's what in essence leads to burnout. So it's about, can we have high challenge, but also an environment of high perceived support? And that's the important word within this, Simon, is perceived support. You, you as an individual and you as an organization may have support structures in place, but if the individual themselves doesn't feel that they are supportive, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it absolutely does not matter. So it's high challenge with high perceived support. That is where you get you're able to tap into all of those resources because they feel supported in being able to chase those challenging aspirations, dreams, challenges, whatever, whatever they're trying to work towards. So, um, mm. yeah, there is certain skills that you can definitely do. So asking questions around how do you how do you manage challenges? What is your um reflection process do you debrief um any of those types of aspects how do you mentally deal with it and um seeing how people respond to that can be a good indicator but again it does not matter if the environment does not allow for it yeah you know what you're making resilience sound like a partnership you're making it sound like it doesn't sit with one individual it's you know maybe this idea of resilience and pushing resilience back on the employee is a way of actually demonstrating that as the employer you're not creating the right environment which is really interesting and what's actually really interesting i think in terms of the, the world that we live in post covid is that with more and more people working remote and hybrid they're not as close to that support ecosystem that you're talking about and therefore maybe they don't feel that perceived support 
um, again, it starts to become very individualistic. You live in your bubble, you're at your desk, you're in your home office, you're miles away from anywhere. It's a tough market. I think there are a lot of recruiters can probably really relate to that comment. That's my own personal mm -hmm. experience. Um, and I think also it's very interesting you talk about partnership, uh, the employee employer, because there are so many solopreneurs, so many, so many freelance people that that almost create their own resilience environment. And what you've just been talking about there is, you know, how do you deal with resilience in terms of its effect on maybe your mental health? You know, if you're if you yeah, are yeah. on your own, how do you deal with that? How do you create your own environment? What are your thoughts on that? Have you got any top tips or anything that you would suggest to help people? figure that out for themselves yeah great 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 question and i think the partnership piece just again to highlight i think that is so so important and it's it's related to everything we do and it's related to feeling comfortable in that environment um you, i'm sure you've heard this the, the statement people don't leave jobs they leave or leave careers they leave managers and in essence that's the environment that's created um so just the point i mentioned earlier just to, to highlight that when i say personal resilience doesn't matter it does it just doesn't matter as much when in in regard to the impact the environment can have on it so those personal interpersonal skills are really important when it comes to managing yourself and when it comes to the performer itself i think and and the role of mental health one of the things i do put a lot in and my approach as a practitioner is supporting the person behind the performer and that's a really important thing for people to be aware of if you want to get the best performance out of an individual support the individual support the person because that will lead to the far better performance and from a mental health aspect we know individuals work best under intense periods of pressure followed by short intermittent bursts of recovery and that's where the high challenge high support comes from so where there's a real difference between sport and business is in sport we are not expecting our athletes to hit personal bests in every single training session we're building them up to achieve that. We're looking for them to peak at certain time points within the season because we know it's incredibly difficult to sustain 90 to 100% output from ourselves all the time. It's, it's not possible. We know the bedroom, the downtime is where all your training gets consolidated, your learning gets consolidated. So you're then able to recover effectively, effectively physically and mentally to go out and perform. It's the same in the corporate setup, except we have a very different viewpoint on it to the sense that if you think about corporate and if you think about other performance domains, that mentality in sport years ago was be the hardest worker in the room. It's now the case. I'm seeing that quite a lot in this space when actually in sport, we've moved away from that to be the smartest worker in the room. So it's not about who spends the longest in the gym. It's who's the most effective with what they do in the gym. And that's the same what we should be here. So we can get everything we need to get done, but still value the recovery part, the downtime part, the bit that fills the cup back up. That's the most important bit. That's the bit that doesn't allow you to go towards burnout. So I, I have a model I talk a lot about, which is uh, thriving, surviving, diving, and recovering. And we move between this merry dance of thriving and surviving throughout a day. But if you want to spend longer there you have to recover and if you don't you go towards diving and diving is where it becomes really problematic and the point i mentioned about the person behind the performer if you've ever experienced or met someone who's had burning it's not just they're burnt out at work they're burnt out as a whole they struggle to get out of bed they struggle with all aspects of their life so it highlights it's not just the performance space it's the person that gets burnt out and not the performer not just the performer should i say that's just so interesting and i'm thinking while you're talking about now being in an interview situation hiring people that i want to know are resilient and actually thinking about talking to them about how they work how they find that downtime how they find that reflection time how they can you know be smart in the way that they operate as a professional mm. person um i think it's so interesting that resilience in in its truest partnership in the way that you articulate it also comes from this idea of building a high performing team you know building out this environment for the whole team to find those resilience kind of areas those moments because if you can kind of scale that out if you can create a culture of resilience mm -hmm. um where it happens 
that you support the person behind the performance that more you you really are going to crack it so so interesting to understand how resilience then feeds into the idea of building a high performing team do you have you had that experience in sport where it's been less about an individual and more about a team from a resilience perspective can you think of any examples you've like i've worked with this person they're incredible at scaling this this concept out yeah so i don't necessarily like to talk specifically about individuals that i've worked with just because that's the interaction i have with them but in terms of sport you see it where you the world cup is, is happening at the moment and you you do see that you have these amazing stars world beaters come together and it's all about embracing the challenge for the team and and rugby is a great example of it where you hear about the all blacks mantra that when you put the jersey on you're you're part of the team it's it's bigger than who you are as an individual because you may perform well but it's about the performance of the team and you see this component where when people embrace that mentality feel supported within that environment they're able to bring everyone together and excel better than the sum of its parts so when you are in an environment where you feel that connection where you feel that passion you can end up outperforming what you would do individually and that's amazing that's embracing that environment where i can really push the boat and i feel supported in doing so so if i make a mistake it's fine mistakes are inevitable so i feel that support that it's okay to do so because what we don't want to have happen if we haven't got that it creates an environment of fear of failure so you're doing everything and you i'm sure we've we've seen this in sport a lot where you're you're playing not to you're playing not to lose as opposed to playing to win so you're doing everything possible to stop a failure happening or a mistake happening that it, it works ironically so yes here's here's how it works if you've got a fear of heights if anyone listening has a fear of heights what's the worst thing that someone can tell you that people who are trying to help you tell you they tell you what don't look down what is the instinctive thing that you do yeah you look down <laughs> and it's that part when you're telling yourself to avoid a mistake it actually brings on the mistake so you're playing playing not to lose actually leads to that mistake so when you're in that environment where you have that kind of i can push myself i can challenge there's high expectations but i feel supported in doing so you're more likely to play to win because we can't control the outcome but if i can perform the best possible and feel free to do so it gives me the best chance of success because that's all we're dealing with can we increase the probability doesn't mean you're going to guarantee it because that is life nothing's guaranteed in life but can i increase the probability and that part you when you will see teams who do that really well where you have individuals who you can see the passion you can feel the passion people love being around it there's lots of conversations going people are all about what is the team goal and how can i add to that that's when you know you there's a there's a really strong balance there's a good balance there people are thinking about the team and what we want to achieve fantastic really amazing. one last question for you because you know we've We've moved and grooved in this conversation, taking resilience into high performance, which is really interesting. And I'm, I'm interested to sort of understand whether deep motivation makes you more resilient. You know, if you drive, if you need something in your life that drives you on, that makes you motivated, does higher motivation uh, make you more resilient? Are there two things interconnected in any way or, or not? And that's, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. That crazy question <laughs> it's a good but i think fundamentally when we, when we think about psychology a lot of it is interrelated you know because we're dealing with one mind and, and how the things kind of interrelate together we know passion is a massive aspect uh passion and drive um we, we've heard one of the sayings that if you have a strong enough why you'll find a how and what that almost comes down to is if you know this is what you want to do it's about embracing the challenge that comes along with it and finding ways to problem solve the how you're going to get there so when you're part of a team or as an individual who's driven you're more embracing of the challenge that comes with it and it's about problem solving knowing this is where i want to go to so high passion high drive particularly when it's intrinsic so it's from a personal perspective we know ex extrinsic goals are great to an extent so the reward outcome if you do this this is the reward you get is only works to a certain extent but it's when we have that internal drive that internal value this is why i'm doing it this is my main reason behind it 
it's that aspect that allows you to embrace the vulnerability, embrace the challenge, embrace the difficulty of a situation and find ways of coming over it, which is why I'm sure people listening, and I'm sure you, Simon, I know I have, where you've had people, once you get past a certain pay grade, they may leave for five, 10 grand more. They get to in a, a different environment where they've got that external reward, but they don't feel valued. So the grass isn't greener when we think about just purely this. It's that internal drive. When you feel satisfied in that internal drive, that internal passion towards why you're doing it, it, it leads to a far greater outcome, far greater chance of success in terms of what you're achieving. And through that, you develop those resilient skills. Amazing. Thank you for that. That has been such a really interesting and insightful chat. And I hope that the people watch it, watching it sort of get a sense of what that might look like for them, especially if they're looking to identify those skills and competencies in other people, if they're looking to hire people for their teams. The, 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 the motivation resilience conversation is one that I think if, you know, certainly in sales and the recruitment industry, if we could understand that and bottle that, uh, we'd stand a really great chance of hiring really great people. But I, what I've taken away from this call is the, the partnership that involves uh, that's involved in resilience, um, that it has to come from both employee and employer, and it has to be something that is um, well thought through and well planned, um, creating that right environment. So, look, Phil, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. No problem, Simon. Cheers.